Hey, welcome back to Developquent. Today I'm going to be talking about the K3 and going in depth on the key switches and the differences between a conventional switch, a Gateron a low profile mechanical switch, and then the new Keychron low profile optical switch. I'm going to talk about the different evacuation points for the various switches. There are five different switches for the K3 that I'll be talking about the optical versions as well as the Gateron versions. The key switches that I'll be showing you today are the optical blue switches and the optical red as well as a brief comparison with cherry browns and then I have some clears which have a high actuation force. Okay so in the box it comes with the keycap puller makes it easier to pull the keycaps off then it also comes with a key switch puller. Now I've found, as I mentioned in my previous unboxing and review, that the you know the keycaps are easy to take off. You can even do it with your fingers. But what's difficult is trying to get the hot swappable key switches off. Even with this, it makes it a little hard. But I'll show you that process now. I will switch out all of these to be blues. Right now they're red. Okay, so this is how you take off the keycaps, if you don't know. Just put these here and pull up. Simple as that. Try and keep them in, if you're going to do a bunch of these at once, try and keep them in the same order. It's kind of difficult to remember where all the keys go, especially when you get up to... Obviously the numbers are easy, but some of these get difficult. So I'll speed this up, and once I'm done, I'll show you how the key switches go. Okay, so I found it a little easier. Once you get a few out, it's easier just to push down on the two next to it and then pull up on the other one. This is a little difficult to use, but if you are worried about pulling them out um, sideways and breaking a stem, then it's probably safer to use this, but I just found when you're doing a lot, it takes a long time. Okay, to switch these out, you're going to take this, and you definitely want to have this for these. And what they say to do is take from the top and the bottom, and you want to move the top up like this, which I found is difficult. Maybe I'll get better at this as I make this video, but it kind of doesn't sound right when I pull it out, but it is. And there's the optical, there's the optical red, really small. So there's one. Now I'll fast forward once I get a couple of these and give you a sound test. Here's a close up of taking them out. As I keep doing this, one thing I notice is once you get the top out just a little bit, you don't really need to try and pull it out that hard. That's when you start need to start to get the bottom one out. So I'll do it here. I got the top out just a little, and now I'll get the bottom, and it'll come out right like that. So it's really not that hard. You just have to do it right. And if you, once you get yours, 
if you did back this or pre-order this, then make sure that you're not going insanely hard to get this out. You just need to figure out the right way to do it and then as I've had a few here, it's given me a lot of practice just to figure out you know, the right angles to pull it out. And it will get easier the more that I you know, get these in and out. So here, I'll just fast forward this again and then we'll get the other ones in. One other thing I wanted to point out is you want to make sure that when you're pulling them out there is a part right here and a part right here on the top. And those two pieces are what you want to be pushed in as you're pulling out. So for example, right here I'm pulling the top first just like this and I want this right here to push this in and at the same time I want this to push against the bottom to pinch those. If you're not pinching both of these, it makes it a lot more difficult. All right, now that those are all out, I'll put in some blue switches. So there is the optical, which just has a single insert right there and you want the u-shape LED you want this part right there to be on the top because that's the, how the LED shines through this is the LED on the top of each of these so I believe you just put them straight in and push not that difficult you pull them out top first but putting them in you kind of just want to push them straight in Here's a close-up of inserting the key switches. Okay, now I'll finish putting in the blue key switches. Alright, I have all the blue key switches in. Now the question is... Do I have a blue switch space bar or do I keep it a linear red? Let me know down in the comments what you guys would do. Okay, now I just need to put all the keycaps back on. And here's a quick view of under the keycap. A lot of people have been asking me, are these keycaps found any, anywhere else other than the Keychron website? And... Um, any of these as in low profile version keycaps. Here's an example of a uh, standard size. And then side by side, let me get the exact same one just to compare. Now the Keychron keycaps are all the exact same size, whereas if I show you this, these are completely different, and this is a escape and a right arrow key. 
So when you're getting keycaps, keep that in mind that these are all the exact same and a standard size keyboard will have different size keycaps because they kind of flow upward and have a, a stepping um, feel, if you will. So one thing I do want to point out also is people have been asking if normal size keycaps will work on the K3 low profile with the low profile switch. But with these, you can technically use any MX Cherry keycap. And I'll put that on and I'll show you a close up of that fitment. Okay, so here are two keycaps. I have a J from a standard size and a J from the key crown size. And I'll show you side by side the difference. Both cherry. You can see right there that it's. I don't feel like it's touching the bottom of the faceplate, but when I wobble it back and forth, I can touch the side. And I have tried this with making, like in the notes and uh, typing with a bunch of them on the keyboard, and they all activate. I'm not sure if every. Uh, standard size MX Cherry will fit. I do believe it will and the stem inside of the keycap will all be the same I believe across all the different key, key switches or the keycaps. Uh, for example up here and down here should be the exact same travel and length in the keycap. Now here's the J of the Keychron right next to it push down all the way. There's a lot more space compared to that one right there. But they both activate. Okay, now that I'm done with that side tangent of keycaps, I'll put on all of the keycaps onto the K3 with the new blue switches on these ones. One thing I just remembered before I continue is you wanna check and make sure all of your key switches are pushed into the faceplate all the way. So just do, uh, you can just fill them all and push down and just make sure they're all firm and just visually look to make sure not the top or the bottom is pushing up or just not pushed down all the way into your faceplate. These look like they're all good. I'll just go like this with these ones. All right, we should be good to go. Now I'll put the rest on. Also let me know, should this right here be a blue switch? I know it is a different color. Right now it's red. But let me know if that should be blue. And that's the forward slash in the bar. Hopefully I don't put one incorrect keycap on these and mess all of them up because I'm not really thinking about if these are actually right, I'm just going by how I put the keycaps, but we should be good. The people that work at Keychron will probably be laughing at me because they put these on for you and they do this all day. They're probably so fast at it. All right, let me just look these over and make sure I have all the right ones in order. Okay, now that I have all the key caps on and the key switches on, I'll do a sound comparison with the blue. First, I'm just gonna do a blue. Um, I've never typed on blue before, other than just clicking them here. So I'm going to just type a quick note and I'll tell you my reactions compared to the red, which also Obviously, I've never used these optical ones before, but I've been on brown switches for a long time as my daily driver. These right here, 
the uh, Cherry MX Browns. So here's a, a first impressions on these optical blues, and I'll tell you what I think. So this is the first time typing on the optical blues. All right, so overall, I think they're really great. I really like the uh, the blue switches. I'm rocking the blue LEDs at the same time. But here, I'll give you a, a better sound test up close of these. Okay, now I'll show you a quick sound test with the optical reds linears. And all these right here are reds. All the top row, except this one's a blue. Okay, now I'll give you a comparison of the blues and the reds. So here's a red and here's a blue. All right, now that we've gone through switching out keycaps, taking them off, switching out key switches for red to blue, now I'm gonna take apart a optical switch and show you what's inside. Okay, so here it is, optical red. And here is a MX Brown. really similar on top the distance is quite a bit less just to put it into perspective this one here is about 18 millimeters from the bottom all the way to the top and with this one it's only 10.7 millimeters from the bottom to the top. So that is a little over half as high. So pretty incredible. It has a little bit less of a actuation than a regular conventional switch. I'll put up on the screen right now the different optical switches and their actuation force differences and the pre-travel and total travel which all of them have the same pre-travel and total travel i believe the pre-travel is the distance before actuation 
when the uh, event happens when the key is pressed and then the total travel is you know, before and after so the everything okay now I'll take this apart so there's these ones that keep it into the faceplate there's the top opening for the LED and then on these sides is what keeps the clear plastic which holds the top of the keycap onto the bottom so I can just pull that off and already it comes out pretty easily so then I'll do the other side and because these are so small you have to make sure that you're just careful with these okay so now I have that off be careful that you don't lose any pieces especially if you don't have any extra keycaps and there's the spring Make sure that doesn't go flying off. And there's this little piece here which sticks in there. So that's everything, and then it has this little rubber piece, which helps dampen, I think. Okay, so now I'll put that back together. Alright, so you're going to get the bottom piece here and put the spring in. And then you're going to take this piece and the bigger square right here is going to go on the top. So the top with the U shape right there. Just like this. And there's that little rubber piece Pull that down a little bit so we can go into that hole. And then we're just going to line that up and push it right in there. Now it's not going to stay together until you put this piece on. And that right there is where the LED comes through. So that's going to be on top. So we'll just slide that right on. And push it together. Check all the sides. And that's it. Okay, just for comparison, I'm going to open up this brown switch right here and show you the differences. So here we go. It opens up. It has the spring, which I've noticed is a lot longer. And then this piece right here at the top the way the clear plastic comes around, it's a lot thicker. This little brown piece is a lot smaller, but it's also a lot longer this way. So you can see how far that needs to be pushed into the keyboard. It's almost longer than the whole, yeah, it's longer than the whole thing right here by a good amount. So we have the spring and then we have the tactile right there which is just a bump halfway down as you push it I'll just put this back together After taking the keycaps and the key switches off and switching them out to blues, I'm definitely excited about the potential of this keyboard. I think with the portability that it has, how slim it really is, it only takes up a, such a short amount of your, of your desk. And having your mouse just right here next to it without having that number pad or the 87% right here really makes a big difference. 
But not only that, but those that are switching from Apple uh, products and using Magic Keyboards, this is going to be a great, a great switch out for you. Uh, because it's so thin and it's really similar and it's a good step into mechanical keyboards. For those that are enthusiasts with the mechanical keyboards, this is also a great option because it's something different. It's a something that we're going to be customizing for a long time. It's the first of its kind to have hot swappable on a low profile keyboard with Keychron's ambitious optical switches and also having Bluetooth to three different devices, having RGB, being able to choose you know, what key switches you want, as well as keycaps if you are wanting to go that route with putting a, a normal keycap set on here. Um, it will work. You can do putting caps, all kinds of different keycaps there. But let me know down in the comments what is your favorite thing about this keyboard. Did you buy it and back it or are you still thinking about it, trying to make that decision? I think you should do it. It's definitely worth it. And compared to a lot of other keyboards out there, especially low profile ones, this is definitely the slimmest low profile that I've seen coming in under the height of a quarter. 10.7 millimeters, or sorry, 10.7 is the height of the, the key switch. 17 millimeters here on the bottom, and only 22 millimeters here from the base to the top. And a quarter is about 24, 25 millimeters. So, really awesome keyboard. Let me know again. Uh, any other ideas that you have for uh, videos on these any other information that you'd like to know I'd be happy to answer them in the comments, but make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel It really helps me out a lot when you hit that like button And I'll see you guys in the next video